We're now just over six minutes away from the planned undocking at 5.04 p.m. Central. As we continue to stand by for Starliner's departure from the International Space Station, I'll hand it over to NASA's Rob Navius for an update from the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Thanks, Anna. Here in the uh, Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, the uh, flight control team led by Flight Director Anthony Varia is in the final uh, moments before the expected undocking of uh, Starliner from the forward port of the Harmony module on the International Space Station. Once uh, the undocking is complete and Starliner has exited the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe just a moment or two ago, the uh, nine crew members on board the station led by Commander Oleg Kononenko will begin their sleep period. They're gonna be moving into an off-duty period on Saturday. The vacancy of the forward port of Harmony will open up uh, that port for the uh, beginning of two crew rotations over the next several weeks. Next Wednesday, NASA's Don Pettit and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alec uh, Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner will be launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a two-orbit rendezvous to reach the International Space Station. That will swell the station's population to 12 and uh, begin an 11-day handover with NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and Konan Yenko and Nikolai Chub, who will be departing the station on September 23rd. A day later, if everything goes as planned, NASA, NASA's uh, Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexand uh, Alexander Gorbanov will be launching from uh, the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on the SpaceX Crew Dragon Freedom. Uh, they will uh, be a two-man crew to reach the International Space Station and provide the orbital Uber, if you will, for Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams to come home on next February with Wilmore and Williams completing what is expected to be about a 262-day mission. Meanwhile, the Crew 8 crew, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Alexander Grabenkin are in the final weeks of their mission on board the station. They are planning to depart after a five-day handover with Haig and Gorbanov. That handover will uh, lead the way for a departure on or around October 1st. The Crew 8 crew will then uh, be coming home to bring the station back to its complement of seven crew members. So with that, we're about uh, three and a half minutes away from the planned undocking of Starliner. We'll be watching carefully. It will take about 21 and a half minutes from undocking for Starliner to exit the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe a moment ago. That's that two and a half mile long by 1.2 mile wide corridor, if you will, the neighborhood of the International Space Station. So we'll be following along as Starliner begins its journey home and a landing at midnight Eastern time at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With that, uh, we'll turn it back to you, Anna, in uh, the Starliner control room. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Starliner undock status. Go ahead. ISS and Starliner flight control teams remain go for an on-time undock at 22.04. Please perform 1.106 crew CST-100 approach and departure monitoring steps 2.2 and 2.3. Verbally call Houston when physical step is confirmed. Be advised that NDS hook motors are driving. Space-to-space -space comm may be ready. ISS crew copies ready for undock monitoring. Thank you, Rob. And we just heard some conversation between the crew on the International Space Station and the teams here in the Starliner Mission Control, confirming that we are continuing to be go for an undock in just under two minutes from now at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern. We are standing by for the command of the undock ATP or authority to proceed. Once the authority to proceed is issued for undocking, the NDS or NASA docking system hooks will begin to open, and there are 12 hooks that seal the surfaces between the NDS and the ISS International Docking Adapter, or IDA. 
Once all 12 hooks are open, springs on Starliner's docking ring will push the spacecraft away from the space station. And Flight Director Chloe Marion just asked for quiet in the room as we are approaching one minute out from Starliner undocking. And we just heard confirmation that the umbilicals are retracting and hooks are beginning to drive. Thirty seconds. Separation confirmed. Starliner is now backing away from station and starting its return to Earth. Starliner thrusters will then complete two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed to help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting lab. The vehicle is now about two meters away from the International Space Station. At the time of undocking, Starliner and the International Space Station were flying approximately 260 statute miles over central China. Starliner will be beginning a breakout burn soon, which will take the spacecraft forward and above station. During this burn sequence, Starliner's thrusters will perform a series of 12 short firings. The entire sequence takes about five minutes to complete and allows Starliner to quickly break out to outside the approach ellipsoid, or AE. And about four minutes into the burn sequence, Starliner will exit the keep out sphere, or the KOS. And you can see those thrusters firing there on the left of your screen as Starliner backs away from Space Station. And we are now just at 35 meters away from the International Space Station. We saw a good first burn. Houston ISS, ISS thrusters enabled. Confirmation, all 27 jets have fired. Houston copies, ISS thrusters enabled. And you're seeing the light show there on your screen. And the first three of the 12 firings have completed and there's about a 100 second pause until the fourth burn. Starliner is about 60 meters away. And flight controllers are reporting good attitude and good control. We are standing by for the fourth of the 12 burns in the series of firings as part of the breakout burn. As a reminder, the entire sequence will take about five minutes to complete. About four minutes into the sequence, Starliner will cross what is known as the or the keep out sphere. The keep out sphere is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. We are 15 seconds away from the fourth burn in the series of 12.
and you just saw burn four was just completed, we're hearing good burn. And the fifth burn in that sequence of 12 just completed and it was a good burn. The sixth burn in the series of 12 was just completed and it was a good burn. We have, we are halfway through the series of 12, six more to go. You might be able to see some of those lights on the front of Starliner, a red and a green and a white. Those indicate the different sides of Starliner and they're used by the ISS crew to watch Starliner move away from the ISS along the undocking access. And we just heard good confirmation of both burn seven and eight completed. Starliner undocked approximately five minutes ago and has just a handful of short firings left in its breakout, breakout burn. And it is now about 150 meters away from the International Space Station. And we heard confirmation of a good burn nine, three more to go. Burn 10, good burn. We have one more burn to go, but they have confirmed that Starliner has crossed the keep out sphere or the KOS, which is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the International Space Station that helps flight controllers here on the ground monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles. Station Houston, space to ground two, Starliner has exited the keep out sphere. Copy, she's exited the keep out sphere. A reminder, this automated breakout sequence was chosen to use Starliner's forward thrusters, which have remained nominal during this flight. And we heard confirmation that all 12 burns in this series of breakout burn firings have completed and they were all good burns. Starliner has crossed the keep out sphere. So the next milestone for Starliner's departure will be crossing the approach ellipsoid or AE. The AE is another invisible shape monitored by the flight control team measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. Starliner is scheduled to cross the approach ellipsoid in about 10 minutes. Vehicles outside the AE have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory, which means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. Once outside the approach ellipsoid, joint operations between Starliner Mission Control and the International Space Station Flight Control Room will conclude and Starliner will be on a path back to Earth. We're now taking a look from 
the VESTA system, which stands for Vision-Based Electro-Optical Sensor Tracking Assembly. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we like to call it VESTA. And this is a look from Starliner back at the International Space Station. The system is really the eyes of Starliner. It's able to pick up on features on the outside of station, like handrails and reflectors. You can see some of that on your screen there in the outlines. And it's the way to assess Starliner's position and attitude. It also gives the ground teams a very accurate look at Starliner's location relative to the station. So earlier we were taking a look from the station back at Starliner. Now we're looking from Starliner back at station. We're just under 10 minutes away from the AE exit, so in the meantime, we will check back in with NASA's Rob Navius in the International Spa Space Station Flight Control Room. Rob? Thank you, guys. Um, Flight Dynamics uh, has reported that Starliner is on a perfect trajectory backing away from the International Space Station and opening uh, a rate of about 13 and a half statute miles per rev. At the time of the deorbit burn, at uh, 10.17 and 13 seconds p.m. Central Time later this evening, the uh, vehicle will be about 56 statute miles away from the International Space Station. That deorbit burn, by the way, will be a 59-second burn to slow Starliner down by 129.9 meters per second, a 4 OMAX burn. OMAX, the acronym for the Orbital Maneuvering and Attitude Control System, uh, thrusters and jets on the Starliner spacecraft that will enable uh, Starliner to begin to drop out of orbit for its intended southwest and northeast trajectory across the Pacific Ocean, across Baja, California, and heading towards its landing at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With the forward port of Harmony now vacant, that sets the stage, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, for the start of a couple of crew rotations that are coming up. Down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, Don Pettit of NASA and Roscosmos Cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner and their backups are in the final stages of their preparations for launch next Wednesday. Their Soyuz 2.1A booster and the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft that they will ride to orbit, uh, they, that vehicle will roll out to the launch pad in Baikonur on Sunday and then final preparations will lead them to a launch next Wednesday at 11.23 a.m. Central Time, heading for a two-orbit, three-hour, ten-minute journey to dock to the International Space Station's Rosviet module. Now, that forward port on Harmony that was just vacated by Starliner's departure will be the port of call for NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, and their launch no earlier than September 24th on the SpaceX Dragon Freedom spacecraft off of Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That will be about a 30-hour transit for those uh, two crew members to reach the International Space Station and the automated docking to the forward port of Harmony. Ultimately, Haig, Gorbanov, Butch Wilmore, and Sonny Williams will do a relocation of the uh, SpaceX Dragon uh, spacecraft from the forward port of Harmony to the zenith port of Harmony, opening up that forward port for the arrival of the next SpaceX cargo ship, SpaceX 31, that's scheduled for launch in October. So a lot of activities uh, lying ahead for the space station crew. The uh, crew aboard the International Space Station soon will begin its sleep period and an off-duty day on Saturday, while the activity shifts uh, over to the white flight control room down the hall as uh, they are in a shift handover right now. Uh, Flight Director Rick Henfling will be taking over shortly to supervise entry and landing operations, and uh, the team over there will be monitoring uh, the progress of Starliner as it moves to its deorbit position about 56 statute miles away from the International Space Station. With that, we'll turn it back to the White Ficker and Anna and Lauren.
Thank you, Rob. Starliner is now about 750 meters away from the International Space Station as it continues to make its way to the approach ellipsoid exit. Again, that approach ellipsoid exit is targeted for 525 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time, 625 and 30 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, and everything continues to proceed as planned with Starliner's departure and return back to Earth. And you're looking live at Starliner and Free Drift engineers are telling us that the breakout burns all went well. Thrusters are all looking good. Everything is nominal as we continue up and around space station and head back to Earth. Again, Starliner undocked just a short while ago from the International Space Station at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern, as the Space Station and Starliner were flying approximately 260 statute miles over central China. And shortly after that physical separation, Starliner's thrusters completed two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed and help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting laboratory as part of the separation burns. And then Starler Starliner began the breakout burn, which was a series of 12 short firings, which allowed the spacecraft to quickly move outside um, the keep out sphere, and it is now approaching the um, approach ellipsoid exit. And once Starliner is outside of the approach ellipsoid, the joint operations between teams here and the Starliner Mission Control and the International Space Station Flight Control Room across the hall will end and Starliner will be back on its path to Earth. And we are about six minutes away from that approach ellipsoid exit, and Starliner is now about 900 meters away from the International Space Station, traveling at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. And this is the view from the WB-57, one of uh, NASA's aircraft that is uh, at the uh, landing site, has been uh, been uh, staged and ready to pick a Starliner or uh, pick up the view of Starliner as it comes in, and that is what we were seeing now. And the, they're filming this video from about 16,000 feet. The BB 57 should continue to uh, give us a view until the drogue parachutes deploy, and then we hope to pick it up with the Cessna that is also in the area. And flight controllers here in the room are reporting that we are out of that blackout period and everything is looking good. Starliner remaining nominal as she returns to Earth. Again, this is a view from the WB-57. Starliner showing a beautiful streak across the sky as she returns to White Sands, New Mexico. We're about three minutes away from the forward heat shield jettisoning. That's the next milestone we're looking for. Starliner is currently about 27 miles above the Earth, and the team at uh, White Sands reporting that they have seen it. We got a tally hole from them uh, reported uh, remotely. That means they are seeing Starliner from the ground there in New Mexico.
This view is coming from the Cessna that's also in the area, picking up uh, Starliner, now, Starliner now from its lower altitude, about 6,000 feet above, whereas the WB-57 is about 16,000 feet up. We are now just uh, six minutes and 22 seconds away from landing. We should also just be a couple minutes away from the forward heat shield jettison, which will bring on the drogue parachute deploy, followed by the main parachutes. And the strobe lights on Starliner are now on. Starliner is now over the landing site, and that strobe light will help the teams actually track Starliner on the ground because it is very dark out there. Now about 12 miles above uh, the landing site and just five minutes away from landing. Watching now for the forward heat shield jettison that should be coming up, uh, again making way from the, for the parachute deployment. All right, and that action you're seeing on your screen, forward heat shield and drugs out. Really interesting view of this uh, coming down from the WB-57. See those two drogue parachutes uh, now deployed. They slow the uh, vehicle down initially until it gets to a, uh, a safe uh, speed for the enormous main parachutes to, to follow. About four minutes to go until touchdown. Now back to a view from the Cessna aircraft in the uh, vicinity of the landing site. Again, this is a, a view from a little lower than the WB-57 we were seeing. The next thing we're going to see here is the three main parachutes come out, and everything will happen pretty quickly from that point on. After those mains are out, we'll see the uh, bottom heat shield that has been protecting uh, Starliner through its journey through the atmosphere come off. That makes way for the landing airbags to deploy. And there's the main parachutes there on your screen. We see three out, currently reefing. And the teams at the uh, landing uh, recovery teams report that they heard uh, the booms as those came out. Three good mains fully open there. You can see Starliner in a slight tilt, so we're going to see the rotation handle move here shortly, and it will level out Starliner. But three good parachutes looking great. Just a little over two minutes until the expected landing time, and we heard the rotational handle has been released, so you can see that uh, tilt evened out. Next up is the back heat shield jettison. And there it goes. That again makes way for the airbag inflation. Nice to see that. You can see the airbags deploying there on your screen. Those airbags are filled with nitrogen as they guide Starliner safely back to the desert floor.
Just a beautiful sight as Starliner makes its way to the sands of New Mexico. And flight controllers confirming six good airbags. This view still coming up to us from the Cessna. We've got uh, about just about a minute left to go until the expected touchdown. We'll be watching for that time for you. Just about 15 seconds away from expected touchdown. You're seeing the ground there in your screen as we get closer. Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. That landing coming at 11.01 and 35 seconds Central Time, 10.01 and 31 seconds Mountain Time at White Sands Space Harbor at the U.S. Army's Missile Range in New Mexico. Our landing and recovery teams will now wait for clearance before making their way to the spacecraft. One of the changes uh, required with no crew on board is that the team here in the flight control room will be the ones to uh, command the uh, parachute uh, to be cut away so that uh, the wind doesn't pull the capsule along. But uh, that's no problem for them. So uh, now with, uh, with Starliner down, they can begin working on some of the post-landing to-do items. Again, uh, we saw Starliner touchdown at 11.01 .01 p.m. Central Time. That's uh, one minute after midnight Eastern Time or 10.01 .01 p.m. Central at the landing site in New Mexico.